tell me about these other two cars that you allege she's holding hostage in some way. She was driving my pickup truck and informed me. Give me, me a year. In 2014, or 2015, excuse me, she was driving, uh, she borrowed the pickup truck because her car was on the last legs. And after driving it for a few weeks, she determined that she couldn't lock anything up in it because of her business and her shows that she would go to, so she needed a, a car that she could lock up. And? At that time is when she told me she needed to borrow some money to purchase a car that she could lock up. She found a car online and asked me to go down and pick it up. So you did? I went down, it was not there. It had already been sold. Okay, and then? There was a PT Cruiser sitting there that, with low mileage, and she said it sounded good to her, so. What did you do, call her? Yes, I did. And said? The other vehicle that she had wanted me to pick up had already been sold, uh, but I'm sitting here looking at a PT Cruiser with 69,000 miles on it, 2004. She said, well, drive it and see if you think it's worth it. I said, okay, so I drove it, seemed great. Great, so what did you do? I purchased it. In whose name? Mine. And where was she when you were purchasing this truck? She in? was up in Apple Valley working. In what vehicle? In my brown pickup, a 93 F-150. Okay, and that was in 2015. Do you remember what month in 2015? February. So the beginning of the year? Yes, ma'am. Is the car still in your name? Yes, it is, as far as I know. Is the car in his name? No. How did that happen? He purchased the car. He called me and asked me, hey, I found this BD Cruiser. Look it up. It's at this. So I looked it up. I actually printed it off. And I said, I have no money. And I literally, I have no money. So there's no way I can pay for it. He says, well, you do a lot for me. You've helped me out so much. I'll help you out. So that was February 20th. I was in Pinion Hills feeling working out of my office at my mother's house when he had called me. And I had clients all afternoon, so I was not in Apple Valley. So he brought it up, and as soon as my client was done with my last client, we sat down, he signed me over a bill of sale, and and I said, do you want to put yourself as a lien holder if something happens to me? And he said, no, it's your car. And I said, okay. How much was it? $4,500 and change. Can I see the bill of sale? Well, Mr. Strickland, this certainly looks like your signature, sir, on February 20th. You want to take a look at this? I've compared it with the signature on the affidavit that you signed. Registered owner. I'm supposed to be the legal owner. It's a bill of sale that you sold it to her. A year later, it's still in my name, Your Honor. Did you ever register it in his name? I did. It, the, when the dealership finished the paperwork, they put it as Walter Strickland and Angela Strickland. They messed up my last name, and then after the battle started in February, or the attitude started in February. I just went ahead in March and went and got it registered right. So you got it registered right? Yes. Perfect. That's what you're supposed to do. You can return that to him. Your Honor? Yeah. The vehicle was uh, purchased in my name only. She picked up the phone while I was on the way home and called the people and told them to put her name on it, and they did. They put Angela on it, Strickland. Listen to me. I'm not dealing with it. The car's in her name, she's got a new title, and it's registered to her. I believe her, I don't believe you. Now we're gonna get on to the next car. Do you understand? Sure. Good.